is a measure of the chemical energy in a substance and we measure this in kilojoules per mole. When we draw out reaction profiles, we know at the activated complex, this is where bonds break and where bonds can make. In a chemical reaction, new substances are made, which means firstly, bonds need to break in the reactants to allow new bonds to be made to form the new products. We need to put energy in to break bonds, so this process is endothermic, and therefore the reverse is for making our products, which is an example of an exothermic reaction. So there's a couple of key definitions that we have to know. The molar bond enthalpy is the energy required to break one molar bonds in a diatomic molecule. If you use page 10 of your data booklet, you can see that the first set of data talks about bond enthalpies. These all show a range of diatomic molecules and the energy required to break those bonds. A mean molar bond enthalpy is the average energy required to break one mole of bonds for a bond that occurs in a number of compounds. The second column shows us the energy that is required to break one of those types of bonds in a compound. This past paper question is from the higher 2019 written 5a part 2. Explain the difference between bond enthalpy and mean bond enthalpy. Because we've got that keyword and, it means we need to give the definition of both for the first mark. Remember, bond enthalpy and mean bond enthalpy can be found on page 10 of your data booklet to help you. Bond enthalpy is the energy required to break one mole of bonds in a diatomic molecule, whereas mean bond enthalpy is the average energy required to break a bond which can be found in a compound. So let's have a go at calculating the bond enthalpy for a reaction. You will be given a balanced equation and on the left hand side we have our reactants and on the right hand side we have our products. The first thing that you have to do is you have to draw out the molecules as they exist. You may have to look back at your national five notes to recognise the shapes of particular molecules. Nitrogen has a triple covalent bond. We only have one mole given in our balanced equation, so we just draw one of our nitrogens. Hydrogen has a single covalent bond in a linear structure, but we have a three in front of the formula in the balanced equation, which means we've got three moles of hydrogen. We're then going to insert our information into this table. The first bond we're going to look at is our N triple bond N. How many of those bonds do we actually have? We have one. If I use page 10 of my data booklet, I can look up the bond enthalpy and I can see that that is 945. So one times 945 gives me a total of 945. Hydrogen, how many of those bonds have I got? The H, the H, I have three. I use page 10 and look up the bond enthalpy, which is 436. Four, 3 times 436 gives me 1308. When I add both of these numbers together, I get a total of 2253. Now remember, we need to put energy in to break those bonds, so that's going to be a positive value because it's an endothermic reaction. So let's look at the product side. We have to draw ammonia, which is in a trigonal pyramidal arrangement. We can see that the bond that we have is the nitrogen to hydrogen single bond. How many do we have? We have six. When I look up the mean bond enthalpy, I can see that that is 388. Six times 388 comes in at 2328. Remember, this is an exothermic reaction, so the total would be negative 2328. When I add 2253, plus minus 2328, that gives me a total energy change of negative 75 kilojoules per mole. This past paper question is from the higher 2018 written A part 1. Ethane can be produced from ethane. Using bond enthalpies and mean bond enthalpies from the data book, calculate the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction. 
So if you want to pause the video, you can have a go. And when you're ready, if you press resume, I'll go through the worked answer with you. So the bonds that I have to break in my reactants are my C to H bonds. How many do I have in the structure provided? I have six. When I use page 10, I can see that the bond enthalpy is 412. Six times 412 gives me a total of 2472. I also have a carbon to carbon single bond. How many do I have? I have one. I look up the bond enthalpy and that is 348. One times 348 gives me 348. When I add up the total, that gives me a total of positive 2820 because remember you need to put energy in to break bonds, which means it's an endothermic reaction. Let's move on to the product side. We have got a carbon to carbon triple bond. How many do I have? I have one. When I use page 10, I can see the energy required is 838. One times 838 is 838. I also have a carbon to hydrogen bond. I have two of those and the energy is 412. Two times 412 gives me 824. The last product that I have is my hydrogen, my H to H bond. I can see that I've got two of those. When I use page 10, the energy is 436. Two times 436 gives me 872. When I add those up, I get a total of 2534, but it must be negative as it's an exothermic reaction. When I add 2820, plus minus 2534, I get a total energy of positive 286 kilojoules per mole. Change in kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So if you want to pause the video and have a go, when you're ready, I'll go through the worked answer with you. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to draw out the shapes of our molecules that are given in the balanced equation. On the left hand side, we've got a C to H bond. How many have we got? We've got four. The enthalpy for this is 412. Four times 412 gives us a total of 1648. We've got um, an oxygen to oxygen double bond. How many of those do we have? We have two. And the bond enthalpy for that is 498. Two times 498 gives me 996. When I add them up, it gives me a total of positive 2644. So let's look at the product side. I have a carbon to oxygen double bond. How many do I have? I have two times by the mean bond enthalpy, which is 743. Two times 743 gives me 1486. I also have an oxygen to hydrogen single bond. I have four of these. The mean bond enthalpy is 463. Four times 463 gives me 1852. When I add these numbers up, I get negative 338. Remember, that's an exothermic reaction. 2644 plus negative 3338 gives me a total uh, enthalpy change of minus 694 kilojoules per mole. On the bottom of page 10 of your data booklet, we have a key definition which is for the enthalpy of sublimation of carbon. And this is the energy required to convert one mole of solid carbon into one mole of gaseous carbon. And they're given as a value of 716 kilojoules at room temperature. And they're given as an equation here. This is really important that we understand that when we change from carbon as a solid to change it as a gas, there will be an enthalpy change which is positive. Remember, we're having to break bonds. However, if it was the reverse reaction where we had carbon gas going to carbon solid, we would need to flip the equation, so flip the sign, and the enthalpy for that would be minus 716 kilojoules. This past paper question is from the higher 2016 multiple choice 14. The mean bond enthalpy of a C to F bond is 
484 kilojoules per mole. And which of the processes is the enthalpy approximately equal to positive 1936 kilojoules per mole? So if I look at all my reactants, I can see that they all start with CF4 in the gas state. So I'm going to draw a molecule of CF4 out and I can see that I have four C to F bonds. If I look up page 10, I can look up the mean bond enthalpy, but it's also given in the question as 484. 4 times 484 gives 1936. We know to break bonds, we have to put energy in. So the total on this side, which is our reactant, would be positive 1936. Now, the question wants us to have the total enthalpy to also equal positive 1936. Now that suggests that nothing should be formed. No bonds should be made in this reaction. Because of that, we need to look at the elements on the left hand side and see that they're in the gas state and the means the products also have to be in the gas state. So multiple choice answer A cannot be correct because carbon has changed its state symbol. And multiple choice answer D cannot be the right answer because carbon has changed its state symbol. We also know that fluorine exists naturally as a diatomic molecule. This would mean that a bond had been formed. Remember, we don't want any bonds to be formed. So the correct answer to this question is multiple choice answer B.